We have a great show for you this month. Edgewater neighborhood gets a redo for their 4th of July party. And we will show you the many, many monument signs that were decorated for the 4th. But our first story is really part two of a previous one involving the Cedar Run neighborhood. Doug Wright has this follow-up story of determination, success, honor, and gratitude. Doug? April 7th, 2019. Picture a beautiful Sunday afternoon with a neighborhood party celebrating the build-out of Cedar Run. There was dancing, there was catered food, and everyone was having a great time. All of a sudden, the worst thing that could possibly happen happened, and one of our residents went down with a heart incident. Needless to say, the quick actions of the four residents of Cedar Run, plus B.B. Blunt, who called 911, and the quick arrival of the Hardyville Fire Department saved the day, and Deborah was home within a couple of days. We're here to talk with those people and also to cover the recognition ceremony here at the Hardyville City Council meeting. We are here at the Hardyville City Council meeting preparing for the ceremony, recognize the efforts of the citizens of Cedar Run in saving the life of a resident, Deborah Turner, who went down with a heart incident at a party we were having April 7th. And you are? Diane Freeman. And what is your background and what do you do now? I'm a registered nurse. I've been a nurse for over 35 years. And this is Mary Coggin. Coggin, I'm sorry. Yep, and I'm also a registered nurse. Um, I work at Encompass Health uh, over in Bluffton, and I've been a nurse also about the same time, 35 and, years. And we're also talking to Vic Warner. Vic, uh, tell us about your background. Well, uh, as far as CPR, you know, I began training with that when I was in the Army. And then uh, when I got out of the Army and worked for a living, I, started, I, it was, I was also a volunteer fireman in my community, so you had to maintain uh, training that way. And then worked in an educational system and continued to be recertified with CPR training for the kids and staff. So uh, that's my background. Great. And tell us, give us a description of where you were and what your reaction was that, that day. Um, I had just sat down in my lawn chair after spending a little time on the dance floor and um, heard a commotion and ran over and saw what was happening on the ground and just kicked into what I'm used to doing when I see somebody on the ground. And uh, Mary, as I understand it, there was no pulse? Yeah, similar situation. I was uh, right next to Deborah, and I was uh, getting some food at the buffet, and she went right at my feet, so I happened to be right there at the time. And Vic, you jumped right in, and I saw you in action. Uh, tell us how your reaction was. I, I, I tell you, the training just kicks right in. You do what you're trained to do, you, and, and uh, it, it works. It actually works. So uh, it, it, the whole situation probably was real surreal in that uh, you just follow what you were trained to do, and, it, and uh, you, you're working with a great team. Well, I'll say I was there as well, and it was a great effort by, and a team effort by you as well as Cindy Steele, who's also a nurse. And uh, your quickness and the arrival of the uh, professionals probably saved Deborah's life. And we thank you all, and now let's go get you recognized. Thank you. Thank you. We are here with the fourth resident of Cedar Run who acted so quickly and intelligently on that day, and you are? I am Cindy Steele. And what is your background? I'm an RN, and I worked for St. Joseph Candler. And you're retired now, thank God. I'm retired in August. Nonetheless, describe what happened on April 7th and your reaction. I was the fourth, so um, CPR was already going at the time, and so I was the recording nurse, which is um, I put the time and what was being done. For instance, um, uh, compressions were being done, mouth-to-mouth -mouth was being done, and then recorded, obviously, when um, the EMS or, or the fire department arrived and the AED machine was applied. Well, I think it's safe to say, and Deborah would say it too, that without you four, she might not be here today. So congratulations on your citation, and uh, thank you. Thank you very much. We are here at the Hardyville City Council meeting, and we are with the two gentlemen who responded to the emergency call on April 7th. And you are? 
My name is Andrew Cantwine, a lieutenant with Hardyville Fire Department. Scott Birchall, engineer. Well, I could uh, attest to the fact that you guys were there in less than eight minutes. And can you just describe what uh, what your actions were? Sure. So uh, on that night, we were lucky enough, we were actually on Highway 170 when we received the call. Uh, so our response time was uh, quite fast. Um, when we arrived on scene, it was phenomenal. The citizens that are being recognized here tonight were performing CPR already on uh, Miss Deborah, and they were giving um, her breaths along with the CPR. Uh, when we arrived, we took over, I took over um, breathing for her and applied the AED, and Scott took over compressions immediately. Um, we were able to deliver a shock quite quickly, and uh, as you can see later on tonight, everything turned out quite well. And uh, have you guys been involved in a lot of these incidents, or is this a fairly rare occurrence? Uh, we, we do get them from time to time. This is probably one of the, the few percentages that are actually successful where something like this happens today. Yeah, I think we were all very lucky that you were close and that the citizens reacted so uh, so rapidly. And you guys deserve every citation you're gonna get for this. We really appreciate it. Appreciate what you do. Appreciate your time tonight. Thank you, Thank you. we appreciate it. We're here with Deborah Turner. And Deborah was the uh, resident of Cedar Run who had the incident. And Deborah, I bet you this was one of your scarier uh, moments in life. Oh, Doug, it was awful. Um, I, it's hard for me to put into words, but I am so grateful to be standing here today. I have so many people to be thankful for. If it wasn't for my neighbors in the fire department, I wouldn't be standing here today. And you're here today, I understand, to make a presentation to the two Hardyville firemen who actually were there to save your life. I am, and I'm looking forward to it. Well, we're looking forward to covering it, and thanks for speaking with us. Thank you. God bless you. Good to have you around. Thank you. EMS credits the efforts of the residents that performed bystander CPR and the actions of Engine 82 crew in saving the life of the Cedar Run community member. Tonight, Ms. Deborah Turner, the recipient of these life-saving measures, is here with us. She's still active in her community, is constantly trying to improve her golf game. <laughs> she can be seen traveling through Sun City in her bright pink golf cart. <laughs> Hardyville Fire Department, as well as De Ms. Deborah Turner, would like to acknowledge these efforts of the residents and Engine Company 82. Tonight, we would like to present Cedar Run residents, Ms. Mary Goggin, Diane Freeman, Vic Werner, Cindy Steele, and members of Engine Company 82, Lieutenant Andrew Camlin and Engineer Scott Birchall, with the Hardyville Fire Department, like to present them with the Hardyville Fire Department Life Saving Award. Through these efforts, Deborah Turner is here tonight to be able to present this award to all of these individuals. <clears throat> concludes our visit here to the Hardyville City Council for the awards ceremony recognizing our four Cedar Run residents and two firemen who were instrumental in saving a resident's life. Deborah Turner was kind enough to say a few words and she is very grateful to be here to say them. This is Doug Wright for Sun City News. Margie Brewster interviews her neighbors to find out the who, how, and where that makes up the people in her neighborhood. Margie? 
Hi, I'm Margie Bruiser, and I am here in the Edgewater neighborhood to focus on our residents and the wonderful lifestyle we have here. This is my neighborhood, by the way, and we're going to introduce you to a lot of people and find out why people chose Edgewater, where they came from, and what they're involved in. Patrick, delighted to be in your home. Thank you, or rather outside of it, making up for a rained out July 4th event. Tell us about Edgewater neighborhood. Edgewater is, a, is one of the smallest neighborhoods in, in the community. We only have 52 homes. There's only one smaller with, with 41 homes. But we have a spirit of much bigger than, than 52. Uh, there's, it's really started, it's, most of the people on the street are still people who built their, their homes here. And we started off with a, a bang. Um, we gotten together almost every month for the last three and a half years, almost four years now and it is enthusiastic every time. And I think it's a function of the group of people we, we have here in the neighborhood. It's just a lot of fun people and people who like each other. And what is your role here? Well, I'm the neighborhood representative. I am, I, I guess I was, could be called the founding neighborhood representative. I was the first one that was uh, elected, not really knowing what I was getting in, into. Um, and it was, um, fun actually I'm just kind of my my nature to be an, an, or, an organizer and such and we've did a lot of that in, initially and now it somewhat runs by itself uh, I think that from a perspective my overall role is to make sure that the residents of the neighborhood are involved in communication that they know what make sure they know what's going on send them the information sometimes it's email sometimes it's it's written in their, their lower boxes but my i think my primary role is to make sure that they have in information that they can use some of them read it some of them don't read it but that's the, i'm not upset about it that's the nature of sun city that's what i hear in every single neighborhood is the same thing but the people here get involved and i, I think my secondary role after communication is to make sure that we have opportunities for people to get involved and you know, we, we've had excellent social committees who organize things and make sure that stuff is available if probably you know on any given weekend or any given day we've got 25 30 percent of the people in the neighborhood are not here they're they're either seasonal or they're traveling they're enjoying their, their next cruise um, they're, you know, but other than that, we get a probably 50, 60 percent tur turnout every time we, we have an uh, event. I, I'm, I just want to make sure that that keeps going. Uh, we had lived in South Carolina earlier. We had lived in, in Charleston, and our intent for a long time was to go to Charleston. And once we actually got closer to the date of doing it, we said, this isn't going to work. Um, Charleston's just too big, too crowded, too busy, too expensive. Um, and it's just even the, the 55 plus neighborhoods there were, are so far out of the uh, city that to call them Charleston is really a, uh, a misnomer. Um, so we, and we had vacationed here also. We had vacationed in Hilton Head. And we knew the, the area. We were actually going to be on a vacation. We were going to Folly Beach, which is outside of Charleston, which we went about every other year with the whole family. And we said, well, we'll come down a few days early and we'll check out a couple more places here, a couple of places somewhere, in, one in, in Charlotte, one in Myrtle Beach. Um, <clears throat> we came here first and we never went to Charlotte or, or Myrtle Beach. Okay. We drove in the front gate and said, okay, this is it. Well, a friend of mine, his in-laws lived in, in Sun City and he always told me what a great place this was. And uh, so uh, I told my wife, we can't re afford to retire in New York. It's too expensive. And so we came here. We came down to, to uh, Hilton Head on timeshare. And we said it rained the first two days. So we decided, let's, uh, let's go visit here. And uh, it was great. We saw all the activities and everything they have here. And uh, my wife, Joanne, who was against moving down here because she missed the kids and grandkids, and uh, when she saw everything that was here, she goes, all right, I'm ready to move. And I understand that you brought some other family members along with you. Yes, when we went back home to Long Island, uh, we went to see my uh, mother-in-law and father-in-law, my wife's parents, and uh, we told them we moved to South Carolina. Do you want to come? And my, my uh, stepfather said, sure. <laughs> and uh, we came with them down to like two months later. They checked everything out. And the rest is history. 
and you ended up buying two homes about three houses down from each other. Tell us what you like about Edgewater neighborhood. Well, unlike other neighborhoods that have like two, three hundred people in it, we've only got like 50 houses. And so we can do so much more than everybody else, to, and we can include everybody. So we have these parties once a month. We have parties at Edgewater. We have different, we've had a pool party. And so, and uh, everybody's friendly and everybody knows each other. So that's why we like it here. I came to Sun City because I have a sister that lives on the south side. And uh, I'm originally from Mount Victory, Ohio. And she said, um, Buckeye, O-H. Good. <laughs> she said, if I was going to retire from the restaurant business, I needed to come to South Carolina. So I came down and checked it out and decided this was a great place to come. The weather's fantastic. And I ended up in Suns in on Edgewater because there was a house that was available. And tell me what are the things you like about our neighborhood? Well, we're close to the swimming pool, close to the golf course. Um, we have two lagoons that we can watch the wildlife in the lagoons, the alligators and the birds. And it's just a great place. Well, we've been in the area for about 25 years. Uh, we lived in another community in the Bluffton area, and uh, both of us worked. And when we decided to retire, we thought this might be a great place to retire. So we looked at houses, big and small, and decided to, uh, to move to, to here, to, uh, to Edgewater. And we lived in a villa uh, here while our house was being built. So I was here every day uh, for the three months it took to build the house, checking on every stud and board that was put in. And we liked the construction, and uh, we loved the house. And we were the first house to move in here in the development, so we got to watch all the other houses being built. I thought it would be nice to live in an area where there was construction going on, but I guess the only good part was I got to plenty of two-by-fours if I needed them. So, and in case anybody's wondering where I'm from, I guess that shouldn't be any surprise to anybody. And if you have to guess, I won't tell you. We learned first about Sun City because my sister and her husband live in Bluffton, and they've been here for 12 years. And we used to come down on vacation and visit them here. And every time we'd come down here, my sister, being younger than I, would say, well, I know where my brother's gonna retire to. He's gonna retire to Sun City. And she would bring us here and give us the tour, and we loved it. From, and she was right. She, <laughs> she was right. She was we right, we loved it. And three years ago, like everyone in the neighborhood, we retired here. And this is like the best neighborhood ever because we all moved in around the same period of time within the first three months or four months during 2016. And everybody was new and from all different places. And it just, and we all, we all, we all we fit very well. And tell me, um, each of you, what you're involved with here. Lil, what do you do with your extra time that you might enjoy in Edgewater and Sun City? I'm learning how to golf, and I'm getting better and better. I've stopped hitting things other than the ball, so that's good. Um, I learned how to play cards. I never did that before. Uh, I play bocce. I do lots of things that I've never done before, and I'm enjoying it. Ceramics. Ceramics. Mm -hmm. We have some good friends that live on the south side. Linda has known her uh, since uh, grade school and um, they invited us to come to Sun City for a surprise birthday party for her 85 uh, year old mother, mother. <laughs> and um, so we came we saw and uh, her husband is an ambassador with Pulte and he took us on a new home tour while we were here and uh, two days before getting ready to get on the plane we were walking around with a realtor most impulsive thing we ever did in our lives so yeah it was a uh, and the hard part was going back and telling my three grown daughters what we had just done. So, uh, but uh, we absolutely love it here. It's, it's, it's so wonderful. We got on the plane to go home. Yeah. We bought before we got on the plane to go home. <laughs> and what was the sh reaction of your kids? Shock, and you're not really doing that, are you? We actually almost called it off, but no, then they came to their senses and decided we're retiring and we should do what we want to do. And just live here. They were they were hoping you'd come to your senses, but they had to come to theirs. I think that's wonderful. What do you enjoy, David, doing at, in uh, Sun City? 
Uh, pickleball, uh, we uh, do that three times a week. Uh, we play pool once a week. We bowl once a week. Uh, we've got a quite active lifestyle here, and we absolutely love it. Uh, I'm a retired real estate appraiser and uh, work six, seven days a week. And uh, this is a long time in coming to, to, to retire. So uh, uh, we just have a wonderful lifestyle here. We really do. We really enjoy being here. Yeah. Thank you to Edgewater for showing off our community tonight and thank you for watching us on In Your Neighborhood. Margie Bruiser reporting. Decorating a neighborhood or monument sign is part of the culture and charm of our community. Many neighborhoods are quite creative in their decorations while maintaining the readability of these signs. We wanted to share some of these talented and creative designs that people who decorate them achieve. We hope you enjoyed your trip around the community. We are proud to show you how your neighborhood's decorated for the holidays. It is truly amazing what they can do. We would love to hear about the events your neighborhood is having inside or outside of the gates. Do you do something different perhaps? Please contact us at least two weeks in advance at our email address, suncitytvhh at gmail.com. And stay tuned to SCTV for more episodes of in our neighborhoods.